Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at OneElect, and today we're going to be looking at Azure Key Vault and how you can use this to manage sensitive data on Microsoft Azure. Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at Azure Key Vault on Microsoft Azure and how you can use this to secure sensitive data on Microsoft Azure. Now, Key Vault is fundamentally a hardware security module with some kind of abstraction on top of it. Now, a hardware security module or an HSM is hardware level encryption, so it's not done at a software level. So all of the encryption that goes on a hardware security module is brokered by some kind of cryptographic uh, IC that will encrypt data and decrypt data at a hardware level. So that's about as secure as you're going to be able to get whenever you're storing data securely wherever you might be doing that. Now, what Azure does for you, though, is it gives you a set of APIs on top of that for managing a key vault and also accessing the data in that key vault. And that's what we're going to be looking at today is these pieces. But before we go to the portal, I want to talk about the various pieces in concept, and then we'll go over to the portal and I'll show you how to set one of these up and how you can use it to secure your applications and secrets. So when we look at a key vault, the basic architecture is going to be pretty straightforward. So let's say we have a set of users over here on the left and we want to grant them access to a key vault, which is represented by this safe icon right here. So to do that, the first thing that we need to do is set up some kind of access controls to that key vault. And that is all done through something we call a control plane. Now the control plane is responsible for determining who has access to what inside of a key vault. And it gives you very granular access controls over everything in a key vault. And we'll get into this in just a little bit. And it's going to be one of those things that's better shown than explained. But just understand that this is the part of the system that allows us to set up access policies to the key vault and it's going to control who has and who doesn't have access to the actual key vault itself. Now this is going to set up access to the key vault by way of a data plane. So the control plane is responsible for setting up the data plane. The data plane is the actual piece that is going to allow our users to ultimately connect to the key vault because once the user has been set up by the control plane to the data plane and that is all working, then the user can then access the data by way of the data plane and then actually get a key into key vault or read one out of a key vault, depending on whatever permissions were granted to that user by the control plane and whoever has administrative rights over that. And this allows us to have separations of concern. So I can have somebody that is responsible for managing the users inside of a key vault, but they don't necessarily have access to the data inside that key vault. And that can only be accessed by the one that has been granted access to a given key or a set of keys inside of key vault with the data plane. So this allows us to have somebody else managing the secrets and somebody else managing the controls to those secrets. So it gives us good separation of concerns rather than having a single person that is managing the entire thing. Although in some cases, those individuals may be the same person, depending on whatever context you're dealing with. Sometimes the user accessing the key vault is an application. And that's one reason that you want to be able to separate a control plane from a data plane. So this is going to have implications on the way that this is set up. And you'll see it once we get into the portal, how this is separated out when we actually look at setting up a key vault in the Azure portal. So key vault can basically store three kinds of data. The first kind of data being keys. Now, when we think about keys and certificates, we typically create private keys. And these private keys are then used to generate uh, one or more public keys or certificates from that key. So the private key is what is used by whatever is servicing a particular service. So if I have a website, when I want to secure that website, I generate a private key that I use to generate a certificate for the consumers of my website to download whenever they connect to my website. Then they use my certificate then to encrypt the data that they send over the internet. And then I can use my key to decrypt that. So in a key vault, I put those kinds of keys inside the keys portion of key vault. And I want to keep these separated from my certificates and other similar type things because these are going to be what allow me to decrypt data, be it uh, for my application on my website or something like that. And so this is important for that reason. And the reason it's separate from the next kind of data, which 
are certificates. Certificates, uh, as we said, are the counterpart to keys, and you generate certificates typically for one of two reasons, either for creating a secure connection like with TLS or uh, HTTPS, as we're very familiar with, or for doing authentication. And authentication through a certificate is typically where you use a private key to generate a certificate, and then you assign that to a user, then the user presents that certificate uh, back to the source and it gets validated against a key that you would have stored somewhere. You can store certificates like that in the certificates portion of Key Vault. You can also store your uh, public keys that are used by websites in the certificate portion of Key Vault as well for setting up secure connections, as we mentioned a moment ago, whenever you connect to a website and it's HTTPS, the first thing that it does is a TLS handshake where the server sends its public key to the browser and the browser then uses that to encrypt data and then send it back over the wire that can only be decrypted with the private key. So the certificate key pairs can be stored in Key Vault or if you're just using it for uh, encryption of your particular, you're the client and you don't have the private key, you can just store the certificates in the certificate portion of Key Vault as well. The last kind of data that you can use inside of a Key Vault is secrets. Now, secrets are things like passwords, pass keys, API keys or connection strings. And these are all very valid things that you don't want to stick into config files that are sitting on a file system that are in clear text or something like that. Putting them in Key Vault allows you to create some controls around them. So what is typically done in this case is we have an identity that is associated with an application and that identity can be something like a service principle on Azure or managed identity. And that identity is a part of the environment. It's not so much something that's encrypted part of the application, rather it's part and part of the environment. And then the application is able to access the Key Vault through the environment that is running the actual application rather than storing those kinds of credentials, passwords, pass keys, API keys, and credentials inside of config files that are part of the application. So having it as part of the environment allows us to decouple the authentication pieces that are sensitive to the application itself from the application. So I can drop my application into something like an app service or virtual machine that has access to a key vault by way of an identity that is associated with that environment, not with the application that is actually running in that environment. And then that identity can then reach out and get the keys out of key vault. So that is the pattern that is typically used in cloud-based applications and is the one that's generally considered a best practice for getting the configuration and the security access controls out of the configuration of the application and decoupling that so you don't have to worry about storing those in something like a DevOps environment or in a config file that's in clear text on a file system on a VM. Should it be hacked, it would be harder to get access to the data underlying that application if you can set up your application to where you're not doing these kinds of things with passwords and connection strings in config files. So now that we've got this under our belt, let's go over to the Azure portal and take a look at how to set up a key vault and we will create a secret and assign an access policy to it. And then we will log in as that uh, user that has that access policy and we'll be able to see that secret once we have it set up. So let's go over to the, the Azure portal and check out key vault. I'm here inside the Azure portal and I want to set up a key vault just from scratch here. So that's pretty easy to do. I'm just going to come over here to add and I'm just going to type in key vault and that's going to so, uh, search for key vault right here. And I can create one of these. I want to walk through the wizard here just to look at the examples here. I'm going to call this blaze vault just for a uh, good measure. And I, that's already taken. So I'm going to call it blaze KV or something like that. And the uh, pricing tier is good. That's all good. I'm just going to leave those as is. Now on this page here, or this blade here, I can configure a couple of different things. I can uh, enable access for virtual machine deployments, for ARM or Azure resource template deployments, or a uh, disk encryption uh, as well. And so what these, these, these options allow me to do is some more of the advanced features of Key Vault. We're not going to get into these today, but I just want to make you aware of them so that whenever you're creating resources on Azure, you can have those access Key Vault to store certificate data or sensitive data that is needed by these resources. So if I wanted to store a, a secret, 
that has uh, that is used by Azure Resource Manager or an ARM template, I can store that inside of a key vault and then have Azure Resource Manager be able to read that secret out of the key vault rather than having to store that in the actual template itself. So this allows me to have the ability to use secrets with uh, Azure Resource Manager. And the same thing would be true of disk encryption and virtual machine setups as well. But for now, I'm going to leave that as is, and I'm going to take you to the next blade here, which is the ability to use Key Vault with selected endpoints. You can do public endpoints. That means you can be accessed from any one by from anywhere. That doesn't mean it's publicly accessible. There's a lot of security controls around that. That just means it's a public endpoint, and there's no firewalling around it. Uh, a public endpoint for selected networks will allow me to choose VNets to associate it with it. Then a private endpoint allows me to use private link to associate with Key Vault, so it can only be accessed on a VNet, or I can access it over a, some, a VPN or an express route or something like that. So for my demo today, I'm gonna, only going to set up public endpoints right here and leave it like that. I can use tagging. We talked about tagging in a previous video, but I'm not going to be dealing with that today, so I'm just going to go to the Review and Create and allow it to do a final validation on this and click create. And I'm gonna let this create a key vault and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, I'm here in my key vault that I have created and it's brand new, I don't have anything in it. So just to give you a brief tour of what we're looking at here, here is where we can set up our keys, here's where we can set up our secrets, and here's where we can set up our certificates. And this right here is the access policy uh, blade where I can set up different things to control access to key secrets and certificate data. So this is where I manage that control plane that I was talking about a moment ago, where I can set up those access policies for the given resources that I'm going to be storing inside of my key vault. And I also have down here the ability to set up the networking endpoints if I didn't do that when I created it. And then here it gives me some security uh, recommendations for various things inside of my key vault. And there's a lot of other things you can do with monitoring down here, which I'm not going to get into today. But all of this allows me to monitor activity, who's accessing what inside of my key vault. So I can get reports of who changed secrets, who added new secrets, who deleted secrets, uh, who accessed secrets and so on by doing the monitoring with Key Vault. But in any case, let's set up a secret inside of Key Vault here. And this is fairly straightforward right here. Uh, with a secret setup, I can do generate or import, and I'm just going to create a new secret here. And I'm going to call it my uh, secret right here. And the value of this can be you know, pretty much any kind of data that you want. Typically, it's string data, and it's going to be obfuscated when I type it in here. So I will reveal what I type here. I'm going to type in my, I'm going to put in my name is, if I can spell it right, my name is Blaze. And that is the secret that I'm going to be storing in this encrypted this or this obfuscated text here. I, it doesn't allow me to see it at this point, but I'm just going to type that in and we'll reveal that secret whenever we set up our control to this in a moment. In any case, let's go ahead and create this secret and that is set up already. Now, once I have secrets in my key vault or I have a keys or certificates, I need to set up access controls for them. So just having uh, access to the key vault doesn't necessarily mean that I can read the data for those. So remember when we went back over here to our access policy, I have Blaze Stewart and I basically have pretty much everything available for creating list updates, these kinds of things for key permissions, for secret permissions and certificate management. So I have a kind of a God mode account on this because I was the guy that set this up. Now, if I was to delete this, I might kneecap myself because I wouldn't be able to get back in here uh, to, to do this unless I added another uh, user into this that has some kind of high level permissions for accessing secrets or keys or what have you. So what I'm going to do now is add an access control policy here. And basically what I want to do is create an access control policy that has very limited access to the keys. I only want the, 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 the user to be able to, to list the keys and to read the key, the, 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 sorry, to read the secrets and list the secrets. But if I look at some of these templates right here, you can see that I have a number of templates that I can use, uh, such as uh, keys, secret, and certificate management, uh, key, and you know, just something like that, key management, certificate management, SQL uh, server connectors, data lake, uh, Azure backup, etc. These are just some templates. If I were to select, it would pre-populate these items right here with the appropriate permissions for whatever resource those are associated with. But for mine, 
I know I just need two things. I need to be able to get and list secrets. So I'm not listing keys. I'm not listing certificates. I just care about secrets. Uh, I don't want to be able to set them, delete them, recover them, back them up. This is just basically for read only access into this particular uh, secrets management system that I'm using here. So once I have that for secrets, I'm going to go over here to my secret principle. And this is where I assign the user that I want to use with this. This could be a managed identity, a service principle, or it can just be a standard user. For my demo here, I'm just going to use a standard user. I set up a user called KV user or key vault user, and I'm going to assign that user to this particular key vault. And well, this particular access policy here, and I'm going to click add, and then I'm going to click save right here. And that's going to add in this user right here. But there's one thing I need to do here before I get into the weeds on this. And that is to set up I am controls. Now, I am controls are different from access policies because I am controls right here allow me to see the resource in the Azure portal. So this is a separate layer of security on top of what I've already looked at with access control policies. This is basically granting access to the resource while this right down here is used for controlling access to the things that are stored in the resource. So that is two layers of security that are built into Key Vault. So to grant access to the resource, I'm going to grant a reader role to this particular resource because that's all that's needed. That doesn't mean that that reader can read everything in the Key Vault. That only means that they can access the Key Vault in the Azure portal or through uh, whatever resource manager they're using, but it doesn't allow them to change anything. It only allows them to see the resource, it doesn't mean that they can see keys or certificates and the certificates uh, or the access policies control access to those actual pieces of data. So let's go over here and do a uh, role assignment right here and let's uh, select a role. I'm just going to select reader and then I'm going to look for KV user right here. And so I'm going to grant access to KV user as a reader role on this particular key vault so that it, when I log on to my uh, subscription here, I'll be able to see it in the Azure portal. Then I'll be able to click on it and then I should be able to see those secrets based on the permissions that have been assigned to this user. Okay, I've opened up a new incognito window here it's so I won't be logging in as a user anymore. So I'm going to type in the user credentials that I have set up here, KV user at uh, me blaze dot on microsoft.com and then that's going to ask me for a password which i'm going to punch in here and i do want to stay signed in now if i go over to all resources i should be able to see the key vault listed here and it's the only resource that has been granted access to this particular user and if i come down here uh, if i try to access secrets it's going to give me um, access to the secret that I have created. But if I try to access this particular uh, keys, I don't have list permissions on this particular uh, resource here. I don't have the ability to list keys. I don't have the ability to list secret uh, certificates either. That's because I only set up very granular permissions for secrets. So I can list the secrets and then I can read the secrets. So if I come down here and come down here inside of my secret, I see the ability to view versions of it. So I can do versioning on my secrets. I'm going to click on this particular version and this particular secret right here. If I was to click on show secret value, it's going to show you what I typed in earlier in my video. I typed in my name is blaze. And so the access control policy basically restricted me to only be able to list and get secrets. And so that was that control plane that was configuring the data plane. And the data plane then gave me access to this particular key by way of the ability to list and get keys when I log in as the user that I assigned my access control policy to. So you can see how those two are working in conjunction with one another. Now, if I wanted to remove access from the actual administrator, I could do that and allow them to only administer the user access to these particular key vaults and uh, uh, resources but they couldn't list or see, uh, list or get or uh, create or delete secrets. They could only assign permissions 
rather than actually be able to do any operations on the secrets themselves. So that gives us the ability to do separation of concerns within the resource itself. So remember, we have two layers of different kinds of access here. So that's a brief demo of Key Vault. Very easy to use, very easy to set up. And again, there's a lot more that uh, we could talk about here. I've used Key Vault in other uh, videos that I've done when I was talking about Kubernetes uh, and how you can use Kubernetes with Key Vault to manage secrets in Kubernetes and things like that. So it's a very useful tool for managing sensitive data such as passwords, key vault, connection strings, uh, API keys, etc. And this is the tool that you'd want to use for that on Azure rather than trying to rig up something or store it in text files on your file system. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.